Now behind the headlines, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Gillibrand was propelled into the national spotlight when she was appointed to the Senate seat vacated by Hillary Clinton. Over the last two years, she has spoken out on hot-button issues such as repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, the Affordable Care Act, and the war in Afghanistan. Now the senator from New York is using her political clout to launch a new campaign she calls Off the Sidelines to get more women involved in politics. Decisions are being made every day here in Washington that affect every aspect of women's lives, whether it's Social Security or Medicare or health care or national security. These are issues that women care deeply about. And so I'm hoping through this advocacy to get more women involved, to get more women voting, more women running for office, more women advocating for the issues that they care about. Because the simple fact is when women are part of decision making, the decisions that are made are better decisions. What are some of the activities that go along with um, Off the Sidelines? Well, what we want to do is get more women engaged. And so different women will be engaged on different issues. We want some women to run for office if they want to. You know, if they care about education, run for local school board. Or if you care about national education policies, run for Congress. So we link to a number of organizations that do trainings. We want women to vote. So if women aren't voting, it links to how you register to vote in your area. If they want to get involved in my campaign, it links to my campaign. So there's all these ways and tools to get women engaged on whatever issue they care about. I also hope that women will begin to uh, talk about the issues more. All issues being women's issues. And the so on the website now we have a number of people telling their stories on video saying why they got off the sidelines, what was important to them, why they entered public service, why they ran for office. I find that the more people who tell their story, because a story could inspire all different people for different reasons. You see yourself in different stories. What made you decide to take this on and sort of run with it? This year was the first year in 30 years that the percentage of women represented in Congress went down. So we're going in the wrong direction. And so I feel that's why this call to action is so important. It's, it's, it's really just about an awareness campaign. And I see it as similar to what we did during World War II with Rosie the Riveter. She had her hair in a red kerchief. She had a yellow background that said, we can do it. And she had her sleeves rolled up, and you could see her arm very strong. And what that was was a, a, an invitation to American women to enter the workforce. And women responded overwhelmingly. Two million women enter the workforce. So I want a Rosie the Riveter for our generation to say, we need you because your ideas, because of your experience, because of the way you problem solve. Is it a bipartisan effort? Well, right now, Off the Sidelines is part of my campaign. It's about who I am, what I care about, and something that I think is really important to this country long term. Uh, but what our efforts do is hopefully we'll bring women to the table regardless of their political party. We want all women voting. We want all women running for office. We want women's views heard. What about the old boys club and issues like fundraising? Is, are those things that hold women back? A lot of studies show that women like to be asked to run, that it really makes a difference if they're asked, uh, whereas I don't think men wait to be asked. So a lot of the women's advocacy organizations that we link to on our website are doing that, actually addressing those issues. Uh, and, and really calling women to, to begin to run and, and telling them how important their views and voices are. So, you know, women are different than men, but I think we can understand it and begin to build on that. Tell us how you balance your work family life. Well, I do what most parents do. You do your best. And most working moms, you know, you have to always make choices and I get to typically decide my schedule so I can uh, not have early morning meetings so I can take my kids to school and make them breakfast and have that morning routine and I can try to limit meetings between 5.30 and 7.30 so I can pick them up from school and make them their dinner and give them their baths, read them their books and put them to bed. And if I have to go back for a vote, I'll do that. If I have to take later evening meetings after they're in bed, I'll do that. But I'm, I feel very lucky because, you know, the woman who's cleaning offices late at night doesn't get to choose her hours. Uh, the woman who's in an emergency room working double shift doesn't get to choose her hours. But I have two beautiful sons, uh, Henry, who's three, and Theodore, who's seven. And I feel, I think, like every family in America feels, it's the greatest life's blessings to have children. And it not only, I think, makes me a better legislator, but a better person. 
Sam Bennett, I don't think this was a hard sell for you. You <laughs> no. actually head up an organization that tries to get more women involved. Uh, tell me, is this really going to be the year of the woman? We hear that, it seems like, every two years. <laughs> it absolutely is not. Um, in fact, we just experienced, as Kirsten Gillibrand pointed out, the first backslide in the number of women in elected office in 30 years. More distressingly, the farm team for Congress, which are the state legislatures across the country, had sweeping declines um, in the 2010 election cycle. So 2012, I would hope that more women are running, but in truth they're not. Why aren't they running, I think, is the compelling question here. I'm going to ask Angela, because Angela, you like I, have uh, yes. run for office, and you have yes. too, yes. Sam. <laughs> uh, so you've got at least three women here who've thrown their hats in the ring. Why is it that women are so reluctant to actually get there in the ring and, and fight it out? I think that the senator said it best that women wait to be asked or want to ask, but when I decided to run, I went to our party, the Republican Party, and they told me that it wasn't my time yet. Uh -huh. Wow! It's such a good old boys game, whether you're Democrat or Republican, where you throw in your favors, mm -hmm. they like you, then they'll support you. So with some of our people in the party, I said, look, I'm not here to ask for your permission. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you respect, telling you this is what I'm going to do. And what we need to do is go out there and recruit more women. The only way mm -hmm. that we can make change is being at the table where change is made. Mm -hmm. Amanda, one of the big problems that women face, actually all candidates face it, but women seem to have a little bit tougher time raising mm -hmm. money. Why is that? Well, I mean, I think, I think, first of all, I think a lot of this has to start early on because women, getting women involved, 60% uh, of men think that they are fit for political mm -hmm. office, but fewer than 40% of women do. And so I think there is still a perception in people's mind about what makes a good leader. Is that a woman or is that a man? And there's a new study out that shows people see men and like to have men as bosses, not women. And mm -hmm. so we need to start changing the way the media talks about women, the way that how people see leaders, and the more people will be giving money to women and, and have Amanda more was so sad even when Elizabeth Dole was running for president and I used to work for Senator Dole love mm -hmm. him to death he gave money to John McCain <laughs> and Elizabeth Dole would bring the people out to her town hall meetings but she can raise the money so I think we need to let women know too give ten dollars here give five dollars mm -hmm. although we yeah. have Patty Murray raising money for the well, Senate exactly. Democrats I just and, want to point and out Debbie out Washington two, two yes, important, yes, that's true two important facts though number one Women don't give politically. That's our vote with your purse research shows yeah. that. And you're absolutely correct. Women need to start giving politically. The other thing actually is, all things being equal, women raise as much money as men do these days. Huh. So we've overcome that particular hurdle. Once we're in office, though. Well, but no, even, even in challenger races, even in challenger. But the issue is this. Men wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, and they go, <laughs> ah, see a senator. Right? <laughs> women don't think they're qualified. Yeah. And women don't wow. think of running. That's the issue. So everyone needs to be asked women they know. Gretchen, to you. But I'm also sorry. the choices. I mean, like she said, she there are choices that you have to make. And mm -hmm. so many women wake up every morning and look at their long to-do list and let and they think let, this is let me one ask last you that, Gretchen, because I and ask important. all of you because I think that one of the things that was interesting it's in important. the senator's comments was about her family. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, trying to balance family. There aren't a whole lot of men who run for office who have to think about whether or not yes, they're going to have time right. to give the baby a bath that evening yes. or pick the kids up That's from school. Right. Is this a problem, Gretchen? It is Huge. a problem, and it's not only a problem in that, but just being educated on what's happening in politics. I had a conversation with wow. you know some 30-year-old women last year who are all you know had their babies and their families and I'm not, I am single, um, but <laughs> they were taught, I was saying, you know, because we have a nonprofit, and I was like, well, would you pass this information on? And they said, you know, actually, I don't have time to read that information. I don't have time to know what's happening in Washington unless it's scrolling across my Gmail or it's on my AOL homepage. I don't know. And it's because they have to make tough choices because that to-do list is so long. Amanda, I, let me ask you this. Are there other ways that women can influence policy? Does it have to be running for office or uh, should they be become lobbyists, should they start nonprofits? How else can women have a role? I mean they should they should do all of that. They should nonprofits, lobbying, they should join the media. We need more women because it, mm -hmm. it changes the changes conversation. It, it gives role models for younger women to say, you know, I don't have I to do, do this one too. thing. I can do anything yes, I want. That's right. Exactly. Well, and I guess we're gonna have to get more women actually making that decision. I'm gonna give you the last word. <laughs> I think when someone decides to run for office they have to have a partner in their husband it has to be a joint decision mm -hmm. and men don't ask for permission but women have to that's right well mm -hmm. and if women care about having influence giving money politically is the best that's way to do key. it <laughs> we'll leave it there that's it for to the contrary